So in this lecture, we are going to learn about the theory involved in hydraulic modeling. So the first question is, why are we even learning hydraulic modeling? So in this case, the outcome of this course is we are learning hydraulic modeling in order to design a water distribution network or a water distribution system. But with the knowledge of this hydraulic modeling, we can also design various other things such as the raw water supply system, a pressure irrigation system, a fire protection system, a sewage force mains, industrial applications and various cooling water systems. So now slowly we will learn the various concepts that we have already read in our UG or PG levels that will be used in the due course of this hydraulic modeling program. So obviously we will not be reading everything into that much depth but we will cover the crux of everything that we will be requiring. So in case you need a deeper understanding you can refer your reference materials. So let's move on. So this will be the basic overflow of this lecture. So in this first we will learn about a variety of principles that we are going to use. For example, suppose you click the compute button on your water gems network after building it. So there are a various number of things that are happening in the background which then gives you the results. So what are all those things? Then we are going to learn a bit about the various parameters of our design such as flow, the velocity, pressure, the equations of continuity, energy, head loss and the various solution methods such as the Hazen Williams, Darcy's Weishback or the Mannings. Then we will also learn about the minor losses and how these are calculated in water gems and then we will learn about the various solving methods. So there is a whole lot of bunch that is coming on. So let's move on to the next part. Let's study a bit about flow. So what is flow? Flow is basically the volume of water that is passing through a area per unit time, right? So that is uh, the simplest definition of flow. Now to define flow, we have various units uh, that are there. For example, the meter cube per second, the liter per second, the meter cube per hour, the feet cube per second, the MGD, GPM and so on. But what happens is uh, there is a problem about which unit shall we use for our calculation purposes. So as per the rules of science, uh, we can use this uh, meter cube per second unit. But even the most countries which are using the metric system don't use this unit. The simple reason is because whenever we are calculating the flows in meter cube per second, the quantity will be very large but our general flow will come in terms of 0.001 meter cube per second and so on. So it becomes a bit clumsy. Therefore, in general practices, we can use this liter per second concept or uh, sometimes in Indian context, we also use the MLD concept. So that is the easiest way to represent the flow. The next concept that we are going to learn is velocity and velocity in simple terms is the speed which with through water flows along a pipeline. Now this velocity has been defined by a very beautiful equation here that is Q by A where Q is the flow and A is the cross sectional area through which this discharge is flowing. Now what should be the unit of this velocity? So should the velocity of water flows uh, shall be in the units of kilometer per hour or the miles per hour? No, it should be generally in terms of meter per second and we will come to know why this happens. In some countries we also get the feet per second units and for the simple conversion purposes you know that 1 meter per second is roughly equals to 3.28 feet per second. The most important question is 
why we are not using kilometer per hour or miles per hour and we are using uh, the units such as centimeters or meters per second the simple reason is whenever we have a very high velocity there are majorly two problems that occur the first is if we have a very high velocity the head loss will be too high okay so which will make the flow literally impossible after a certain point of time again if we have a very high velocity so whenever the pipes uh, or the flow will get closed or open we will have to incur certain heavy transients so what are the transients now these transients are not a part of this course but let's learn a bit about it so transients are basically water hammer so these uh, pipes will start vibrating and sometimes the pressure may be so high that the pipes or the other components may burst which may cause damage so therefore our velocity needs to be in a certain range and which can be defined by the meter per second units or the feet per second units so in typical countries uh, what ranges we follow is 0.6 to 1.2 meter per seconds that is 1 feet per second in any case it should not go beyond 2.5 meter per seconds to 3 meter per seconds for the reasons that i have explained a meanwhile ago so to know the velocity of your country you can refer the manuals of your country for india it will be told in the lecture that comes after this that is on cpheoo guidelines okay so this was a basic introduction about the velocity that we use now we are going to learn about pressure so what is pressure this is the most easiest thing pressure on a body is defined as the force that is applied on its cross sectional area now there can be various units of pressure such as pascal kilopascal pounds per feet square atmospheric and in india we use meters of h2o to define pressure now what is the cpheo level of pressures and for other countries what is the level of pressure that you generally use in a water distribution network so this is a part of your codal provisions as i have stated above this will be found in the lectures on cpheo manual there are two kinds of pressure one is absolute pressure which includes the atmospheric pressure plus the measured pressure the other one is gauge pressure so when we talk about absolute pressure in water distribution networks we do not use absolute pressure rather we use the gauge pressure so when we are designing a water network please keep in mind that that is the gauge pressure that we are giving it absolute pressure is also used in some cases for example when there is a vaporization uh, that is to be calculated in the pressure in terms of creation of transient such as water hammers etc but in general we use the gauge pressure okay and if we talk about unit we can use the meters of h2o or kilopascal at times now let's talk about some of the equations that are used in water gems so first among the lot is the continuity principle and it simply states that at any given junction the total quantity of water that comes in is the total quantity of water that is used assuming zero losses or uh, and also assuming that there is no inflow from outside the network therefore the continuity principle in simple terms can be summed up as sigma the flow in the is pipe uh, which is denoted as qi which is equals to the usage at the junction which is denoted by u so this uh, simple equation is based on the law of conservation of mass okay so moving on to the next principle now this principle simply talks about what happens to the tank with respect to the network so if uh, we have a total 
inflow of let's say qi okay that is positive inflow in the network and uh, the total negative inflow or outflow usage is uh, u then the difference between the two will give the volume shrinked in the tank and that will be given by the height change in the tank multiplied by the area that is area into height change that is the net discharge that is coming out of the tank so it is as simple as that the next thing that we are going to read is energy principle and it simply states that the total energy uh, in a system uh, can be summed up as the elevation energy the velocity energy and the pressure energy but here we do not use the term energy rather we use the term head now what is this head that is the energy in terms of meters of h2o right so the first term in this equation is z elevation so let's say a pipeline is situated uh, at a level of 10 meters right so if the pipeline is open then it has the required amount of potential energy to flow because it is situated at a higher elevation from the ground level okay the next type of energy that is there in the water distribution systems is the pressure energy whatever pressure is there in your uh, system because of gravity or because of external pumping that energy is stored in the system okay so we can calculate it by the pressure divided by the density of the liquid then the next uh, term is the velocity head and it is simply v square by 2g where v is the velocity of the fluid that is flowing through the pipeline so these are the general terms uh, which are used in calculating the head of the flow that is happening through the pipeline now one very interesting thing to note here is that the velocity head is very less when compared to the elevation head and the pressure head so in general we neglect the velocity head in most of our calculation purposes in a design of distribution system so this keep uh, so this you need to keep in your mind now there are several heads uh, that we have already already talked about now a combination of all those three heads uh, can give rise to some new terms one of such term is uh, static heads so before knowing what is static head let us know what is a hydraulic grade line so as so as you all have read the surface or the profile of a water uh, which is generally flowing in an open channel or a pipe flow which is partially full so when we draw that it is known as a hydraulic grade line right now what is a static head static head is the elevation plus pressure head so it will not contain the velocity head which is also known as the agl right total head is the static head plus velocity head okay what is head loss if we have two points then the difference between the head between those two points will be known as the head loss right so fluids generally move from a higher head to a lower head which we all know so to illustrate the same let us look at this diagram so in this we have a head at point a so as the flow moves through the medium uh, let's say it is a soil medium so it is gradually losing some of its head so that is shown is the that is shown in the uh, piezometers that are uh, there in the flow so we can see that there is a gradual decrease uh, in the head as we move forward so therefore we can conclude that flow moves from a higher head to a lower head okay now to calculate the head losses we have various equations for a turbulent flow so what are these equations so first of all uh, head loss as we have discussed in the last slide it is the energy that is used when water travels from one place to another or we can also say the energy lost due to various obstructions so 
there are various researches that has been done on this part and various empirical relationships have been developed so how are empirical relationships different from a uh, equations derived from the fundamental laws of nature so empirical relationships are equations that has been developed as a result of various experimentations so they may not be having uh, proper dimensions uh, but if we put the values of uh, the required parameters they will give us the head losses okay so generally uh, what water gems uh, has offered us is three kinds of head loss equations so basically there are three such empirical relationships the first one is the darcy's weiss back equation second is the hayes and williams and third is the manning's equation now we all might have read about all these three equations so we'll have a little look about all these three in the upcoming slides so the first among the lot is your darcy's weiss back equation okay now the darcy's weiss back equation is a pretty simple equation and it state as states as head loss is equals to flv square by 2 dg where the head loss is denoted by h the length of the pipeline is denoted by l the velocity v the diameter is d and g is the acceleration due to gravity one thing that is remaining is f and uh, that is the friction factor now if we have a flow going through some of the parameters are very easy to calculate for example the length can be easily calculated velocity can be easily calculated diameter can be easily calculated g we all know but the problem arises when uh, we have to calculate the f now f is uh, dependent on the pipe's roughness okay so it will uh, vary from material to material so therefore uh, this equation actually darcy's weiss back was developed nearly 200 years ago or to be more precise 170 years ago from today so therefore uh, that time a proper methodology of converting uh, or of calculating this f was not developed but later it was seen by moody that based on reynolds number the friction factor for various uh, materials can be calculated and this is a graph that represents the same so how do we calculate the friction factor if you want to know more about that you can do a little bit of google research because it's pretty much easy the next in the line is the hayes and williams equation now this hayes and williams equation states as h is equals to kl d raised to the power 1.16 v by c whole raised to the power 1.85 where d is the diameter in feet or meters velocity is represented by v c is the hayes and williams c factor which again depends on the type of material l is the length k is equals to 6.79 for v in meter per second and if the velocity is in feet per second then k will be 3.02 head loss and the length will have the same unit so if you do a change in the unit of the length there will be a corresponding change in the unit of head also okay now this equation might have uh, some nasty looking exponents but let me tell you this uh, when we compared it uh, this equation with darcy's weiss back equation and especially in terms of the factors f and c then this equation is relatively easier one and it is widely used uh, rather than the darcy's weiss back equation because c uh, more or less remains constant for a variety of materials but c also has its own limitations now when we see uh, about the c factor it is generally measured uh, in the field and uh, then it is very ca calibrated in various manners uh, in order to get a correct value with time uh, as it happens in most of the pipes the carrying capacity uh, changes also bring a change in the c factor 
okay because c factor is not a measure of the roughness of the pipe rather it is a measure of the carrying capacity or the smoothness of the pipe okay so this is how it is different from the darcy's waste wax f okay and then if there is some corrosion or it, uh, loss of carrying capacity due to various other reasons then that will change the c values some of the typical uh, c values uh, is uh, 150 if we have a uh, smooth ideal pipe or 130 for a typical design for a new pipe and you can read the other values so you can see the various uh, c values for various pipe materials for asbestos it is 140 if you are using a uh, steel uh, it is also 140 for concrete and then if you are using a uh, tin then it is 130 and so on now we move on to the manning's equation so manning equation is the simplest equation that you might have learned and it states as v is equals to c naught we generally ignore because its value is 1 for metric units uh, r to the power 2 by 3 h by l raised to the power half divided by n so here v is the velocity r is the hydraulic radius that is the area by weighted perimeter then h is the head loss that we need to calculate l is the length and n is the manning's roughness coefficient now manning's roughness coefficient again is the same thing as our c and f here uh, the roughness coefficient for various uh, units are given as uh, for a smooth pipe it is generally 0 0.009 for a neat cement it's 0 0.010 for a ordinary concrete pipe it is 0 0.013 and cast iron it's 0 0.015 now in case we need to convert the c and n we can use these graphs okay but the problem with this graph is it will depend on the size of the pipe and the velocity uh, rather we can say the ratio of size to velocity so to do a conversion of c to n it is possible now we do a comparative analysis of the three methods the first is the darcy's waste pack second is the hazen williams and the third is the mannings so if we talk about what kind of fluids we can apply these methods on then darcy's waste pack can be applied in all fluids whereas hazen williams can be applied on water only and the same is uh, true for mannings that is water only then as we have discussed it is very difficult to get uh, the f factor for darcy's waste pack but for Hazen Williams, uh, C is relatively easier and then Manning's also N is easier to get. Now Darcy's Westback uh, is good for a variety of roughness ranges. Whereas Hazen Williams is good only when the flow is uh, relatively smoother or the surface flow, surface is smoother. And Manning's can be used when the flow is rough. So you can remember this table as it is very frequently asked in interviews that what is the comparative analysis of the various methods then moving on uh, to the next topic that is our minor losses so there are various losses that happens across a water supply network and some of these losses are the minor losses which are caused because of the various fittings that are there in the distribution network joints bends and valves so in a nutshell it is calculated by calculated by the h is equals to kv square by 2g okay where k is the minor loss coefficient and h is head loss due to the minor loss so there is not much to learn about uh, this here then there are various k values depending on the kind of barrier that you have the next is we can also calculate the k value dependent on the flow coefficient now what is this flow coefficient so you might have read about this it is generally represented as cv and it is the flow that will pass at a pressure drop of one unit okay so that will be the flow coefficient and uh, it also depends on the diameter that we are talking about 
then next is uh, the network representation so generally if we talk about water gems uh, what will generally be shown in a network is a node connected with a link and then further connected with a node and this will carry on so here the nodes can be your reservoirs your tanks your junctions valves and variety of variety of other things so in this way uh, you can draw a network for your entire city or the study area that you are working for one thing to note here and it is rightly written here in the slide also that the pumps and valves are technically not nodes and they are links okay but they are treated as nodes uh, by the water gems okay and why they are not links it is because they have two heads right one at the starting one and second and the ending node uh, okay so you need to remember these points then how actually the water gems work is uh, it's very simple process we ha might have calculated a water distribution network manually and it used to be a iterative process so this is how water gems also works first we will enter the data and then set up the unknown equations okay then water gems will give a initial solution then it will solve for h and q and it will try to keep solving uh, until it converges so what will uh, what do we mean by convergence so unless and until we get at least two consecutive values of h and q which are similar for example h1 q1 and h2 q2 are similar h1 is similar to h2 and q1 is q similar to q2 so at that point we will stop because uh, even if we give some further addition there will be no change in h and q so it means we have attained the perfect value so till that time we will be doing our calculations and when we have done that h and q has been solved for then we calculate the velocity and pressure and then we finally present the results uh, last but not the least there are various type of model runs and uh, generally what we are going to learn is steady state but for a learning purpose i will also be disc discussing some of the other methods if time permits so that's it for this lecture i hope you liked it you can watch the other lectures available thanks for watching have a very nice day